Hello, this is Dr. Kevin Kirk, and today I'm going to make a pumpkin in Blender. That's right, Blender. So here we go. And I start with a cube, which I destroy. Hit delete on it, and hit delete. So it's gone. To add something else, you go to add, of course. In this case, it's going to be a mesh, which means points, lines, and polygons. Go down to UV sphere and make a ball. As I zoom in here, I can see the ball. By the way, if you hold down the middle mouse, you can roll around. And hold down the shift and the middle mouse, and you can pan all around. And hold down the control and the middle mouse, and you can zoom very, very smoothly, even inside of what you're working on. So those are your main tools. All right, now I'm going to try to work on this looking pretty much straight down. So I can do the view, and I can try to figure out where I'm looking on this Navigation is great, and you can pan, orbit, and zoom. But I want to go to the top camera, boom, like that. Now it says perspective here, and I can change that by hitting, well, the easiest way is over in the tool number buttons on the right, and I will hit number five. Now I can adjust this, there's number eight, there's number two, so I can kind of rotate this out. But number five, you'll notice, will bring it to orthographic view. Orthographic view is straight on, where everything is exactly straight. There's no vanishing point. If I take that off and go for perspective, that's more like art. You see that vanishing point? It's more how the real human eye sees. But if we go to orthographic, that's how it really is. The walls are straight. They don't get smaller in the distance. And it's much easier to work with things like this sometimes. In this case, it definitely is. So let's get started and make our pumpkin. First thing I'm going to do is try to make it in the edit mode instead of the object. So I can work with the different pieces of it. Here are the faces. I can right click on one of those. I go to an edge. I can right click on one of those. For now, I'll go with the points. So I right click on a point and I select it. Yay. All right, now I'll hold down my shift key to make multiple selections. I've just selected two in a row. I want to select all of them. The easiest way to do this, I could go click, click, click all the way down if I wanted. But the easiest way to do this is to go into select and actually do select loop. The loop will be straight through on it. Follow it straight through. So let's watch how this goes. Select loop. That's edge loop here. Boom. And the whole thing is now selected as you can see. If I didn't do that, if I instead chose let's say the wrong one, which can come in handy sometimes. And in an edge ring, it selects everything perpendicular. It selects all of this through it. So I have this ring here. Think of it ring like it has thickness, something like a ring you'd wear on your finger. So there's actually thickness in that. But no, I want to select an edge loop for now. So I'll do that, and I'll skip a few of these ribs. These are going to be the ribs of the pumpkin. And I right click, hold down that shift so I don't drop my selections. I just did, didn't I? Hit a control Z, control Z is your best friend. Hold down the shift, make a few more selections, make sure you've got them next to each other. I'll do this quite a few times, sometimes giving two or three, sometimes even one. It just depends. Hold it down, move it over a bit. All I'm doing now is making these selections where the ribs would go for the pumpkins. And you'll see how that works in just a moment. Right about now, actually. So I have a little bit selected, but not the whole thing, not the whole rib. Easy solution, you guessed it. Go into Select and Edge Loop. Boom, we have it now. That's a common tool you'll find in all 3D programs, pretty much everywhere. It's pretty universal. And I'm going to just stick to universal tools through these tutorials so that you can use it anywhere. Now. What I'll do here is I'll take it and I will pull these in to make the ribs of the pumpkin. That would be over in scale. I can translate, which means move. I can rotate, which means turn. And I can scale. Scale is going to be, of course, to scale the whole thing. I'll do the scale. And I'll click it a few times, as many as I need to, to get this activated down here. When this is active, I'm going to change certain axes. As I can see, well maybe you can't down here, I'm not sure, the Y and the X axis correspond to the green arrow and the red arrow. So those are the X and the Y. 
That's what I want brought in. That will make the ribs of the pumpkin. So I'll just grab these and I'll point in type, put in about type 0.82. That pulls them in on this axis. Nothing here and nothing at the top. Let's do the same with the Y. Set that up for about the same 0.82. That's just kind of a random thing I found that works pretty well. And the Z, I don't want to touch. I don't want to bring that top down at all. Now I'll mess this up a little bit in order to show you what happens if you do. If I bring this down to 0.82, I see so many people do this. Boom, it's just horrible. I end up like the pineapple of doom. It's sharp up here. It's not good. You don't want it. Zoom in and see it. This is just, you don't want to do that. It's not a pumpkin. I don't know what it is. It looks like some, I don't know. Anyway, you don't want to do that. So back here, you just want to mess with those two axes. So let's scale it again. Oh, sometimes you have to do it twice. All right. Now let's scale that again. The X. I'm going to set that up for the point 0.82 or the point 0.8. I'll do point 0.81 for now. And the Y, just play with these values till something that looks good to you. And the Z, I just want that for one. One complete. That's a regular 100%. Looks so much better that way. Looks so much more like a pumpkin. All right. When I have this, I'm going to deselect it so I don't mess it up. Select, deselect all. Let's also select all. I could deselect all. You saw the shortcut key was A. So anytime I want to, I can hit A to select everything or deselect everything back and forth. Very simple to make those selections again. Okay, so what I have here is a whole bunch of angled. You can see how it shines and catches the light pumpkin ribs. So we're starting to get there. Next step, I think we'll squish this guy down a little bit. Maybe we want to change our view over here. Maybe we want to look from the side or the front. There it is. And I want to squish it a little bit. Now to squish it, I'm going to grab everything. One of the easiest ways to do that is just go into the object mode. If I grab the object mode and hit scale, tell those tools to pop up, well, it's along the blue arrow here, which I see is the Z axis. So let's pull down the Z axis. I can just click for little increments here and start to squish down the pumpkin. That looks pretty good. I'm happy with that right now. So I've just squished down the pumpkin. Now the next step can get very tricky. What we're going to try to do now is make it more pumpkin looking. We've got to squish down a little bit, which is great. But let's go ahead and make that kind of indentation at the top without making it too crushed looking. So we'll do that with the bottom, we'll do that with the top. There's a few tricks to this. There's about three different ways to do that. We'll go over one, maybe two, and see what we can get. So I'll kind of roll this guy over a little bit. And take a look up top here. Once again, I'll go back into the edit mode so I can grab my various faces, points, edges. And I'll go over to faces right now. So I'll grab these guys. Now it would take forever if I right clicked, right clicked, hold down the shift, right click, right click, right click, right click, right click, all that. It would take forever to do that. So I'll go to some of my different tools. Let's deselect what we've got with my A key and select A key to select or deselect all again. In this case, I'll go to the circle select, which is nice. I'll just kind of click it and there it is. The whole thing is selected. So then I've just selected it all. Now to drop that selection tool, I just right click and then my other tools work fine. Let's take a look what happened with the circle select. I selected it and nothing selected on the back of it. Now that's an interesting point because this is solid. If I change this out to wireframe, then everything behind it is visible and will get selected. But right now we have it just solid. That's fine. I'm not selecting anything behind it. And that's just for perfect. That's what I want for right now. All right. Now I could break this down at this point and have more detail in there and that would kind of make it easier to work with but I'm just going to kind of do it manually and break this apart in there and we're going to go to the tool we haven't used quite yet. The faces are selected. I'm going to extrude a region that means a whole bunch of faces together and I'll extrude a region. Shortcut is the E on there. I can click over here and just kind of do it from there, but I'm going to actually hit the E and extrude it a little bit. So it just brings it up. It's extruded. I'll bring it up just a little bit. Seriously, just a little bit. Then I'll go and I want to do the scale again. Now I want the scale to be controlled, so I'll click it twice. 
make sure I'm in scale. There we are. So make sure the scale is selected. And I want to play with it right here. So I'm going to mess with, once again, the X and the Y axes. I'll bring it down to about point, let's try point 0.6 and point 0.6. Now the, reason that, now the reason I'm doing this, it'll come back, there you go. The reason I'm doing this is to have more points for more detail. That's important. If you have more points, you do have more detail. You can get too many points, and that's a difficulty. But for right now, I'll do it like this, and that's good. I think I'll do it the most basic way for now, just to show you how to do this. I think that's a good approach. Maybe I should do that again right here, and I think I will. Let's do the same thing. So I'm going to extrude it once again. That's E on the key, or you can go and just hit extrude. Right here, once again, it's extrude the region. So I'll do that again. Hit E for the extrude. It's extruded right there. Just a very, very little bit. Click it, just so it takes. And I'll scale it. So hit the scale. And I'll work with these. Whoops. And I'll work with these right in here. Let's do again about a 0 0.5, 0 0.6, something like that. Once again, just along the X or the Y, I don't want to mess with the Z right now. Up, oh, that was 5 instead of 0.5. That is called bad, so let's not do that. 0.5, there you go. Okay, so I've got a lot more detail in there. I'll hit A to deselect. Actually, I don't even need to deselect. Let's control Z on there. I don't want to really deselect. So I have these here, and it's starting to get a little out of control from those extrudes. So I can flatten this out. I can actually do this. This is a nice trick here. I can do a shrink. Well, I can do a scale. And I'm going to bring down the z-axis. Watch this as I click down. And it's actually going to start to flatten this. Or I could just, oops, or I could just kind of bring that down like so. Okay, let's just type something in. There we are. All right, so I've literally flattened this out. Now I have pretty much what I wanted. It's nice, it's smoothed off, and I have more detail in there to work with. Here's why. I'm going to take this, and I want to have that indentation as it goes down into the pumpkin part. So I want it to go down in a little bit. One of the easiest, if not the most flattering ways to do this, is as follows. I will kind of move this down a little bit. So I'll make sure I'm in move. I don't want to scale it or anything. Make sure I'm in move down here. Let's see. Sometimes if it's gone, I'll hit the global button here. And when it's in move, I'm going to move it. Literally, just a little bit. Make sure you move it on the axis. I'll grab the blue part. Let's move it down a little bit. That's fine, just a little bit. Now, on the select, I'm going to do this step by step. So on select, I'm going to do more. On some programs, it's called grow. Some programs, it's more. I'll do more for right now. That's what this is on this program. And move this whole thing down a little bit. So as you can see, I'm starting to indent the pumpkin. Let's do it again. So select, and I will do more. Good. So pull this down a little bit more. I want to expand, and the shortcut keys for that, as we saw, are Control and Number Pad Plus. So let's do that. Let's do the Control and the Number Pad Plus. So I can expand, and the Number Pad Minus is to shrink. So from here, I'll bring this down a little bit more, like so. And I think we're getting there. Do another one, another grow. Bring this part down. So I'm just kind of squishing the top of this pumpkin. It's starting to look pretty good. A little bit more. Just kind of flattening this guy out a little bit as we go. And that's looking pretty good. I think that's actually fine. Now I could go and do some minuses. I think I might. And bring this down even further. Maybe with this part I will. Even further in, so a bit of a pumpkin depression down there. And I think that's all right. Maybe even a little further one on. Okay. So that's what you need to do. And it looks nice and kind of indented a little bit that way. Not too much. I'm not trying to make like a apple or anything. But that looks pretty good. I'll show you another technique from the bottom down here. I'm going to squish this flat. And I think I've already shown you part of this before. But I'll hit A to deselect. 
And I'll grab it again with the select on the circle. Very easy, just click and drag it around there. It selects all of those polygons right there. I'm gonna increase that. So I'll just do the same thing we just did, which is the control and, I'm sorry, the shift and, it's control or shift. Oh, I have to right click to drop that tool. And then the control plus plus. I'll grab quite a few polygons there. And I'll start to squish this part down. I think I'll do even one more. And I'll literally start to squish this down easily by using the, you guessed it, scale tool. This is going to be along the z-axis. So let's scale along the z-axis. I'm just going to try to do some clicking. Oh, that's growing it. And just slowly kind of stretch this down. Now you notice I'm getting this kind of long stretch in the polygons right above it. And I don't want that. So I can change this by moving it up a bit. And that works pretty well. I'll do a drag it back a bit by doing the control and the minus minus. And just like I was doing at the top, I'm gonna to start to shape this, same thing. Minus, bring that up further. And you've got that kind of pumpkin-y looking look in there. And there it's pretty well squashed. All right, that's a good way to make kind of a squashed looking pumpkin. And it looks pretty great right now, a very fat pumpkin. Maybe it's too thin. If you think it's too thin, go back into the object mode. And what do you think you'd use? Whoops. That's a tricky thing, you have to grab it twice. This scale tool, let's bring it up a little bit. You can just go and do it manually if you want to. And I'll do that right now, it's a pumpkin pancake. Which are very good, by the way, but I don't want that. So something about like that, I think is pretty great. Okay. I'll go back into the edit mode, I'm more comfortable with that in general. And I'll hit A to deselect. So right now I have a general, basic, quite a good pumpkin shape to start with. Now a few other things I could do at this point, if you want to carve it, it's going to be a slightly different approach than if you make the vines with it. So for right now we'll just stop with a decent pumpkin shape. And we should be okay. I'm going to grab all of the faces, make sure I'm in faces now. And I am, so I'll grab all of the faces and I should be able down here somewhere to smooth it. If I hit the smooth, that's great. And go into object mode, whole thing at once. A to deselect, then I have a basic smoothed out pumpkin shape. And that is as far as I'm going right now. If you want to do the subdivide, you can make it smoother. But we haven't decided what we want to do with it yet. If we want to make those vines up here, or if we want to carve it, carve it, go for the subdivide, start working it. Vines, don't do that at this point. All right, so that ends our basic pumpkin. It's silver, you can color however you want to, but this is a good, good base pumpkin setup for you.